How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC and today we are doing the week two update of the Kyle Noseworthy Bake Apple. We're going to do some different comparisons with some other fixed blades that are comparable to this. We're also going to talk a little bit about some slips, some traditional knives. So grab a drink, grab your snack, let's get ready. We have a lot to talk about today. So we've been testing this little fixed blade for the whole month of June. This is the Bake Apple from Kyle Noseworthy, as you guys know. It's in 01 Tool Steel. It's just a really cool little EDC fixed blade. And I am genuinely, absolutely loving this so far. The only gripe that I've had, which I've mentioned in a prior video, is that the blade stock is a little thick for me. But I understand why he goes with this um, width. I think that, you know, given Kyle is living in Newfoundland, Canada, and he's on a homestead and he's an outdoorsman, I think he is much more geared toward a bushcraft mindset with a lot of his designs and models. I am somewhere in the middle. I live in the woods too. I'm an outdoorsman or outdoors woman, I guess I should say. Um, and I really like a durable, reliable blade. But at the same time, I, I know that geometry cuts. So I do think that some knives are like a hair overbuilt. And even if you want to use a thick blade stock, sometimes just using a different grind, like a full flat grind can be more beneficial for slicing capabilities. So I did mention that I would love to see this model in a full flat grind with maybe a little bit thinner, you know, blade stock. But really, so far, this is just absolutely incredible. The O1 is holding a very nice edge. It's easy to touch up. It's very tough. It's durable. I did a bunch of um, limb cutting outside the other day. I went in the woods and just, you know, I was cutting so many limbs off of trees and stuff and clearing some paths with this. And it did very, very well. Really comfortable in hand. No hot spots. It's just a, it's a wicked little blade so far and I'm really enjoying it. And um, for what it was made for and for the type of person it is geared toward, this is just an absolute pleasure to use. It's a very well executed design. I'm really enjoying it. And for EDC tasks, it's working equally as well. So I, I really enjoy this so far. But I did want to bring in a couple of different fixed blades that maybe might work better for you if you're looking for like uh, either slicier or on the opposite end, something more durable. So we're just going to talk about those a little bit. So for another small EDC fixed blade, the BGM Knives Mini Spade is an absolute beast. Now, I, I genuinely don't understand how someone would need more than this, realistically speaking. But if you're just looking for a different blade shape, really, the BGM Knives Mini Spade is an absolute beast beast. So you can see here they're very close to the same size, same length. This knife is six and a half inches long. I have a whole bunch of mini spades. This one is in CPM crew wear with a double hollow grind and I opted for no choil so I could put my own little tiny one in there which you may not even be able to see. I put that in with a dremel and I want to be moving it back as the life of this edge diminishes. I didn't want that giant choil on this one. I just wanted to try something different. But if you're looking for something with more blade height, but very rugged and with a thick blade stock like the Bake Apple, the BGM Knives Mini Spade is a fantastic option. This is a knife that I have fully tested on the channel. It's incredible. This is John Miller's version of the perfect EDC knife for him. He also makes a full size. It's, it's a very comfortable, really nice knife. It's an absolute beater. This is a great camp knife, especially the full size. You can baton with it. You can dig with it. I mean, it literally looks like a spade shovel. Really beautiful swedge and grind configuration on this one. Just an absolute beast that you can really beat on if you want. So if you're looking for, like I said, more blade height and just kind of more to work with than the Bake Apple, the BGM Knives Mini Spade is 
nearly the same size and just a different type of knife. And also you can get these full flat ground. I have a MagnaCut full flat ground mini spade and it is an incredible slicer. So you don't have to do double hollow. You can get full flat ground and it is just that will sail through any material. Uh, just something to think about. If we're also talking about small knives that are really overbuilt for their size, the Essie Kandiru is a little tiny blade. This is more of a backup blade or a woodworking blade uh, for bushcrafters. I think this was meant to be a companion blade for a larger knife. And maybe this is something that you would carve a spoon with or make a a trap. Uh, this is great for notching. It It's just a little tiny blade that is really meant to be absolutely engulfed by your hand so that you can work with every ounce of this model. It's just tiny. And I have big hands for a girl, small hands for my viewers that are men, but... As you can see, I can just absolutely eat this thing up in really any direction. Like you just, it's tiny, but that was the purpose of it, right? So that you you can do these little tiny tasks with it that require precision and control. So if you're looking for something smaller, a little tiny backup blade, maybe something to do some carving with on your camping trips, stuff like that. This is a great option. Essie makes fantastic stuff. This is in, I believe, 1095. It's either 1095 or 1075, but I'm pretty sure it's 95. And um, this is just an awesome little knife that I, you know, clearly have been using a little bit, testing it out. This is one that I want to do a full test on at some point, but let's just bring in the bake apple. So the bake apple is tiny and the candiru is way smaller than the bake apple. So an absolutely tiny little knife. But again, a great option if you're looking for a small EDC fixed blade, if you only need a little bit of a blade there or a backup knife, these are all great options. And then moving in the opposite direction now, thinner, slicier knives. We do have the LT Right Frontier Valley, and this is a fantastic knife that I have talked about a good amount on the channel. This is what you're looking for if you just need thinner and slicier. Now, again, this is, you know, this is robust with the blade stock. Uh, you can absolutely beat on this, but you are getting the capabilities of that full flat ground blade that just allows you to slice better. This moves through cardboard like a dream, especially in comparison to something along the lines of the Bake Apple. This is saber ground, so you have more of that wedge type deal going on. That is a pro for woodworking and maybe some light batoning if you're doing kindling. That is a con if you're moving through cardboard, okay? Or apples, right? Because it's going to wedge things apart as opposed to slice. This is a fantastic slicer. Absolutely gorgeous, full flat ground blade with a durable and robust blade stock, but it does have plenty of room to thin out and it's just much slicier. So this is going to be way better for cardboard, for apples, for anything that you just need a thinner finish with. And this is just a little more of a slimline, elegant design in general. We have a, you know, a thinner blade, or not blade, um, handle, I should say, uh, very comfortable, really minimalistic and ergonomic like the Bake Apple. Again, you know, no finger grooves, no choils, nothing telling us where to go, but um, just a very comfortable universal handle on both of these. One thing that I really like about this is that it is a perfect size, and I believe it's a perfect size for really anyone. E even if you have larger hands, I mean, there's a little bit of room back there, and um, it's just very, very comfortable. This is really reminiscent of the Alex Steingrabber Shark, in my opinion, if you've ever seen that knife. That's a knife that he, I don't even know if he makes it anymore, but people have always raved about it, always wanted it, and it's never available. So if you're looking for something very comparable to the Shark, this is as close as you can get to it, in my opinion. And for a great price, I believe I paid $109 shipped with a sheath 
you know, the handmade sheath from JRE Industries. $109 for this shipped. That is a very good deal, in my opinion. LT Wright just does fantastic work. I love them. The people are phenomenal. They do fantastic work. Made in the USA. You really can't beat it. Um, all of these knives that I will be showing are made in the USA, by the way. And this is an A2 tool steel, so it will take a patina. Easy to sharpen. Great toughness. Just an all-around fantastic outdoors knife, but a little more geared toward EDC tasks if that's what you're looking for. Now, let's look at something that came in the mail yesterday from Richter Knives, of course. My brother, he made this pocket organizer for me, and I just wanted to show this to you guys because I think it, you know, it's absolutely stunning. Look at that stitching. That is incredible. I believe this is called Whiskey Barrel Leather. It has a very, um, it, it's really textured. It's not scratchy, but it's just, it, it, I don't even know how to explain it. I don't know if the camera will pick up the texturing. It almost looks like micarta, but it's just this beautiful aged looking leather. It's very soft and supple. I really gravitated toward this when I got it because a lot of the pocket organizers that I have are made with leather that, you know, instantly forms to whatever you put into it. So you do not have the flexibility to switch out tools because it'll just form to what you put in it the first time and then you're kind of stuck there. I like that this is so supple and soft because I don't have to use the same flashlight and pocket knife in this every time I use it. I can use whatever I want. It's so soft that I can literally push the tools up out of it from the bottom. Normally with a pocket organizer, I have to put a lanyard on my tools and grab them out from the top because like I said, they form, right? This is so soft and supple and flexible. I can put whatever I want in here whenever I want. And you can just push the items up from underneath even if they're small. I, I love that. Look at that. This is that little tiny trapper from Old Timer. Absolutely tiny. But I love that I can put it in here. It absolutely disappears. Then you pop it right out. Really nice. The flashlight here has a lanyard on it. But again, just super soft, supple leather. You can put whatever you want into this. I am really happy with this so far. It's It's just a beautiful design. The stitching is gorgeous. I love the lanyard hole there i'll definitely be putting a lanyard on this but just again michael knocked it out of the park go follow him on instagram go subscribe to his youtube channel please i will link him down below he does phenomenal work he's the one that makes all of my pocket slips including the one that i will be showing right now what in the world is that <laughs> We've already looked at this on the channel, but I just need to show you again because it's that stunning. Like, what the heck? That's gorgeous. I've been using this knife a lot. This is the Great Eastern Cutlery 74 model in plum, otherwise known as the Mustang, which you can probably see right there, a little Mustang. We have gone to Teener Town with this, as you can see. Really interesting colors here that we've collected. I've been cutting everything from hot steaks to burger to uh, nectarines, oranges, apples, you name it. So we're getting some really beautiful blue hues in there and purples. Absolutely gorgeous. A really nice stain up there. This is just beautiful. This is a really nice knife. This was a gift from my friend Jesse who um, has a special little place in my heart. But this is just a gorgeous knife. I'm really excited because I am just about to put my own edge on this. GEC knives do not come with a usable edge really. It comes with a guideline that you can start with to put your own edge on or you can you know quickly hone it with a ceramic rod when you get it and it will keep an edge for a little while. But they're kind of meant to, you're supposed to put an edge on it. Otherwise, you're not going to be satisfied with the performance. It's just a very light bevel that they put on to show you where to start. So I'm really excited to put my own edge on this as it is just about ready for that. Really excited, but man, is that gorgeous. So I've been using this a lot. 
I find that out of all of the knives that I have right now, the traditional knives, this is the one that, at least for now, I'm very curious about using. It works really well for me. I think this is an awesome universal design. Again, it's thin, but um, can handle any task you throw at it, really, for a knife this size. Beautiful blade stock. Really nice walk and talk. No finger choils, no nothing. So just, again, fits the hand really, really nice. This has been an absolute dream to use so far. I really, really like this knife. It's just beautiful. I think with the slip, it's just, um, it's a, it's a great duo. I think this just looks really, really nice. The slip is getting a patina and wearing in. It's definitely getting darker as time goes on, so it's really going to start matching these covers soon, but I just think that's gorgeous. So please go put an order in with Michael Richter over at Richter Knives. Please fill up his books. We want him doing this full time by the end of the year, and only we can get him there, okay? You gotta go put an order in, or five. Please, he deserves it. Uh, the last thing is the small Savenza 21, of course. I've been carrying this alongside the Bake Apple just because as previously stated, this is a little thick, and with the saber grind, it just doesn't always want to move through all of the material that I throw at it on a daily basis. So as backup, I have been carrying the Chris Reef Small Savenza 21 in S35VN blade steel, and I am actually really excited that I've been carrying this and using it more because uh, although, although they do not offer S35 anymore from Chris Reeve, it's MagnaCut now. Um, it's very interesting how laying this edge back just completely changes the dynamic of the edge retention. Now, that's not to say that it's, like, mind-blowing or that they should have stuck with S35VN. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I think that moving to S45 and then MagnaCut was the best game plan for that company. However, the 35 is really very much altered when you have a 15 DPS edge. Way better edge retention. And, you know, this is really dirty right now, so um, use your shit. But this is just holding an edge way better than it ever has. And it's really cool to see a knife change so much. The edge just did not last when it had that convex 17 DPS edge from the factory. It just didn't work for me. And it's so crazy how just a, a hair, two degrees, can change everything. I still haven't had to touch this up yet, and I've been using it like crazy. So just something to think about if you are looking for improved edge retention on a knife that you may have. Uh, maybe you're in the mindset of it being just too soft and it's just not working well for you, please try to lay the edge back before you give up on it because this is a knife right here that I was really disappointed in in terms of edge retention and the 15 DPS has been an absolute game changer and it's holding an edge very, very well now. It's, it's like a completely different knife. So I just want to keep pushing that on you guys, reiterating that because edge angle is really important. Geometry is equally as important, if not more, but the the edge angle, um, really, really important, guys. Think about laying your edge back and giving your knife a nice fat bevel if it is not cutting and slicing the way that you want it to. I did this freehand quite some time ago. This was the first time ever doing freehand reprofiling for me, and, um, it, it was so worth it. It was so worth doing that for this knife. So try it out for yourself. Um, and again, if you want your knife to open and close like this, your Sebenza, use it. That is the best way to get it to do that. I have also heard that nano oil works well on Chris Reeve knives. I have no prior experience with that, but that's just what I've heard. I personally use the Slick-Em-All from OCD for EDC and it works very well for me. But guys, Using your knife will get it to do this, okay? I promise. I think that's all I have for you guys today. I love you very much. I hope you're all doing well. Let me know down in the comments what you're carrying today. I hope you have a great weekend. I also hope that you go use your motherfucking shit. That you learn to sharpen your knives. And I will see you on the next video. I love you guys so much. Take care.